Recently, I got a shocking email from Evernote saying that they were severely limiting the features in their free account to 50 notes and that the price for the features that I've been using for years to help me keep track of my crafty inventory was going to over $100 a year. Well, that was enough to make me look at alternatives. I would loved using Evernote over the years to keep track of all my goodies. It had, and it still has, some great features. I had four notebooks, one for stamps, dies, stencils and embossing folders, and each item had a note that I added tags to. When I wanted to find, say, a happy birthday sentiment, I could use the search feature and it would show me all the notes that had that tag. I have a couple of videos that show how I was using it and the web clipper feature that was so good, and I'll link them here in the description for you. At work recently, I've been slowly learning how to use Airtable and about some of its capabilities. And when I got that shocking email, I figured I would try moving my inventory over to Airtable and see how I liked it. Apparently there's a way to export your Evernote notes directly to Airtable, but of course I didn't hear about that until I was pretty much done. So I did it the old fashioned way, one by one. I started by setting up a base. Airtable looks like a spreadsheet, but it has more database capabilities. Since I had recently changed my physical storage to include all of my supplies, I decided to put all of them in one base. I kept it very similar to my Evernote notebooks and my main or first category is manufacturer. Each of your columns has a title and you can change the type or function of that column by clicking here and selecting what you want. For both manufacturer and product name, I left them as single text. Next, I added an image column where I'm able to put a photo of the product as well as upload any photos of cards I've made with that product. I generally just upload a screenshot from the store website and my card photos come from my hard drive. Next, I created a product column. This is a multi-choice type column that has a number of selections. Stamp, coordinating die, die, stencil, stencils 360 or embossing folder. I can choose more than one of these if I have a whole bundle of coordinating products and that makes it easy to see which products I have that work together. Next, I have the date of purchase, which is a date column. And then next to that, I have the year of purchase. I'm starting to think that these two columns may be redundant and I may get rid of one of them. My next column is the used column and it's a checkbox type column. So once I've used a new product, I put a check mark in the box and that helps me easily find any unused products if I wanna focus on using those, which is quite often. Next, I have category. This corresponds with my color coding for my physical products. Sentiments, background, floral, Christmas, nativity, image, etc. Finally, I have my tags column. Here's where I put anything I can think of as far as when I might use the set. So I might put Mother's Day on a flower set. I also list all the sentiments that are included in each set. One of the benefits of inputting my records one by one was that it really helped me de-stash things that I had just been holding on to out of habit. It made me really think about whether I wanted to keep it enough to do the work of inputting the record, and the result was a nice little pile for the de-stash boxes. Now this next part is something I'm still getting used to. The default view is this grid, but you can also create a gallery view. This is much more visual with the images of each product, and it looks more like Evernote. So I can sort by as many factors as I want. As I mentioned earlier, I often like to see what I haven't used yet to try and use those products that at one point I just had to have. Another favorite thing to sort by is manufacturer. I tend to like my things in alphabetical order. To search, you come over here and type in what you're looking for. It will give you the number of results and highlight each one so you can scroll through and see what there is and decide which result you want to have a closer look at. I'm still pretty new to this and I'm still learning some of the functionality. I'm using a free version and you can have up to a thousand records in a base. So I'm good for now at less than 500. Here's a look at the other options. I don't even know what some of those things mean. So I think I'm probably good with the free plan, at least for now. I've set up a second sheet to keep track of my newest inks from Lisa Horton. 
And I may add in some of my paints for gel printing and watercolor powders. This is something new for me since I've always just had my Catherine Cooler inks and I just know what they all are. But I thought I'd give it a try and see if I like it. I hope you've enjoyed a quick look at how I've set up my air table. I'd love to hear how you manage your crafty supply inventory and any air table hacks or tips you may have. Thanks so much for watching.